Hello and welcome. I'm the Reverend Hugh Reed, and together with the Reverend Carrie Stover and the Congregation of Kingsway Lambton, I welcome you to another edition of Kingsway Lambton Worships at Home. This room will be much more familiar to you than many of the rooms that I've started these services in. This is the main kitchen of Kingsway Lambton. It's the beating heart of many events we hold here. The youth can be found making cookies and spaghetti, the men making chili and roasting turkeys and flipping pancakes. You can tell a lot about a man the way he flips a pancake or loads a dishwasher. The women come here for June luncheons and Christmas luncheons and to prepare our Super Bowl Sunday. And men and women together work to prepare our meals for the Out of the Cold program and Stonegate Ministries. This past week it would have been packed every day of the week with flea market workers. People coming in out of the dust and the chaos to share some coffee and cookies or to share soup and sandwiches to renew old acquaintances. It's like a Nova Scotian kitchen party, but we would have drowned out the fiddlers. The week begins with the memorial service here underneath Ross Foster's window. And it ends about two o'clock on Saturday with us dragging in weary bodies to once again sit down together and break bread together and share the stories of the day and of the week. This room is where over and over again we break bread together and get to know one another. Our gospel lesson, our service today is built around the story of Jesus' encounter of the disciples on the road to Emmaus, and the risen Jesus being recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. We'll look at what this means and what this means for our lives today in the course of our service. But I'd like to begin, as usual, by thanking our music director, Ian Grundy, and our section leads for their beautiful contribution to our service, ministering to us through the hymns and through our anthem. And once again, it is my great pleasure and blessing to welcome you for joining us in this time of worship. I invite you now to join in the call to worship which will appear on your screen. Welcome, you who walk with the one who walks with us. Let us join together now in our opening hymn as we walked home at close of day.
Friends, it is good to be here as we worship our risen Christ. I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we rejoice in the hope revealed with your new day's light. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we see beyond all doubt that nothing exists beyond your saving power. You have overcome even death, promising us and all creation the power of your transforming love and the gift of new beginnings. God of resurrecting power, it is by Easter's light that we worship this day. Meet us, Lord, on our various journeys. Guide us on the path toward our destination and renew our strength as we continue to walk with you. Open our eyes so we see the signs of your presence around us. Open our hearts so we may receive your peace and love. And empower us to pass on to others the grace you have shared with us so freely. In the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us join together now in our prayer of confession and renewal. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, in Jesus, you have drawn near to us. You have borne our wounds and draw closer still. Forgive us if we do not recognize you. Forgive us that we are too self-involved, too concerned with our own agenda for us and for you. Forgive us if we try to make you a God in general who is nothing in particular, as if you do not act with a particular compassion and a particular love for a particular purpose. Help us to recognize you in your self-giving as you walk with us on the way that we might walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, remember and believe that anyone in Jesus Christ is a new creation. Behold, the past is finished and gone. The new has come. Your sins are forgiven. All that would keep you abandoned and alone and barred from the way forward has no right to your life. From this day forward, walk in newness of life. And thanks be to God. Amen. The passing of the peace is the way that we affirm and recognize the new relationship that we have with God and one another through the self-giving love of Jesus Christ. And today we pray for the peace of the people of Nova Scotia and recognize our relationship with them as fellow Nova Scotians all. And thank you, Avalon, for the use of your flag. Now I invite you at home to share the peace with those around you and those who are on your heart. May the peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us share the peace with our neighbors. And may the peace of Jesus Christ be with many broken hearts this day. And for our Good News Candle on this Sunday, April 26th, we celebrate with Horace and Priscilla Knight. A granddaughter was born to join their three grandsons. Nora Margaret Kiani Knight arrived on Thursday. And we congratulate Suzanne and Bradley for the birth of their daughter. This week on 
Thursday, Alistair Curry, David McDonald, and Bill Lawler celebrate birthdays. I wanted to light it too for the fact that 250 masks have been delivered to Fred Victor Mission and other frontline agencies. Almost 1,300 are in production, and we thank all the sores and Gibson's cleaners who have come through as a, a team effort with Kingsway Lambton and producing masks, much needed. I wanted to light it too for the people of Nova Scotia responding with love and compassion to the terrible events of last Sunday. And we have our Nova Scotian tartan here underneath our good news candle as a sign of respect and a sign of love. And today, Pat Strizik has a birthday. So for all the good news we share as a family in the light of Jesus, the light of the world, And Pat, once again, since it is your birthday today, I invite you, if you wouldn't mind, to blow out our match. Amen. Let us join together now in the prayer Jesus has taught us. We'll use the more contemporary translation of our Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the time of the offering in our service, and again in response to many inquiries, yes, we are still taking mail at the church, and you are still welcome to mail checks and your envelopes there. But we also, for convenience, provide the donate button with the e-blast that goes out with these online services, and also you'll find that same donate button on our website, and it gives you access not only to the Tithely app, but also to do an e-transfer if that is your wish. Once again, there are many who are having great difficulties in this time, and our hearts go out to you. And a reminder that you can also make a gift by simply calling a friend, by remaining at home and social distancing or physical distancing, that is still the way we are loving our neighbors and defeating this virus. So let us have patience and let us do what we can in this world as we too bear the wounds of love for our neighbors. Let us now pray as we receive all these gifts. O oh, gracious God, I thank you for those who give generously at this time. I ask your blessing on them as whether they sew a mask or call a friend or donate to your work in our world, that they may know they are affirmed and that you are with them even as your life goes with all of us. And in that risen truth, we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Gospel lesson on this third Sunday in the season of Easter is taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 25. We again begin later on that first Easter Sunday and join the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Listen for the word of God. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. And talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept 
from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things? and then enter into his glory. Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening. And the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. May God bless this reading to our understanding and our living. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious Holy Spirit, shape and bless the humble and human words I speak, and the thoughts, feelings, and responses of those who hear, that this might be a time when we recognize you in our midst and go with you on the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this Sunday we join the disciples on the road to Emmaus. They were despondent, broken, empty. And that's where a lot of us are this week in this country after the events in Nova Scotia last Sunday. We join with those who have had their lives shattered by something so unfair and unjust and insane. The words of Nick Eaton who was grieving the death of his wife Kristen along with their young son. Use similar words. He said in an interview on CBC last night that he felt shattered, devastated. You can make up any words you want, he said. He did feel the overwhelming love and compassion of the people in Nova Scotia and the people across the country, but he still felt empty. And you can't blame him. The disciples felt that way on their walk to Emmaus. Someone they loved had been taken cruelly and tragically and unjustly from their lives. And their hopes, as well as their friend, 
died with him. And there they were returning to something perhaps that they knew, perhaps to home in Emmaus, having had a once promising future taken from them. They walked on that dusty road. Now few of us have been there under such tragic circumstances, though some of us have. Some of us know what it is to have had a loved one cruelly taken from us. Almost all of us know what it is to have that heartache and that grief and that place of emptiness when life tumbles in. And you know what it is to walk on that road and not know where you are going. Know what? Not what the future holds. To know or not even care about the future. We human beings can get into those places and who can blame us? When the lens we put on our lives can only see in one way and that way not very far. It is in fact typical of us as humans that we walk around with certain lenses in our lives that screen out many things that are all around us. One of the things about COVID-19 and this lockdown is that people are saying they are noticing things they had never seen before. And certainly in Toronto, and I think in many cities around the world, we're watching a burgeoning of wildlife retake our streets. Well, the fact is those Creatures have always been there. You're walking late at night, you see them around. They have always been with us. Perhaps we have not noticed them. I, in uh, doing these videos, have suddenly become aware of how noisy the world is when I'm sitting down to try and tape a call to worship or a prayer of confession. I hear noises all around me. There's a lot going on in this world that we never take notice of. Sometimes that's necessary and sometimes it is a great loss. A gorilla walked into a soda fountain and he put down a $10 bill for a $1.50 Sunday. A clerk at the counter thought, what does a gorilla know about money. I'm going to get a few extra dollars out of this. So I gave him the Sunday and he gave him a dollar change. While I was doing that, he said to him, you know, we don't get many gorillas around here. And the gorilla answered, at nine dollars a Sunday, I don't wonder. All right, it's probably not the right time for a gorilla joke. It is amazing what we can miss when we have certain lenses on our eyes. The disciples were in a place where they could not see beyond their own heartbreak, beyond the way their world had tumbled to a very small circumference around them of broken hopes and broken dreams. It's not surprising when Jesus came and joined them that they did not recognize him, who would have recognized even their best friend on such an occasion. But they walked with him and shared their heartbreak. And of course, Jesus began to speak, but, well, he interpreted to them stories from Scripture that seemed to speak of a suffering servant who would come and be the one to redeem Israel. We're told that they did not recognize him until the breaking of the bread. What does that 
mean? Well, for many, this is often interpreted as when Jesus went in, he took the bread and broke it and gave it to them. This very much is a resonance with his actions at the Last Supper when he shared the bread. This is my body given for you. And no doubt that is something that is working here and they would have recognized their friend in the depth of the meaning of that particular meal. But I also have a thought which comes from the rest of the Gospel of Luke, comes from the Gospel of John that we read last Sunday. Do you remember that the disciples were afraid when Jesus came among them and then he showed them his hands and his side. Then they recognized him when they saw his wounds. In the Gospel of Luke, shortly after where our reading today left off, we're going to hear the same thing. Jesus comes into the midst of the disciples in the upper room and they are afraid and he says, don't be afraid, look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself. It is through his wounds that they recognize him. There's a story told of Saint Teresa of Avila, who was known for her visions of Jesus. She was a great theologian in the early church, and the modern church has named her one of the doctors of the universal church. Though at that time, what she wrote sometimes got her in trouble with the Spanish Inquisition, and she managed to get out of the trouble by ending a fairly controversial, perhaps, statement about the risen Jesus with the words, but what do I know? I am only a miserable woman. This miserable woman has given a great gift to our Christian faith. One of the stories that came out of one of her visions was when Satan appeared to her as the risen Christ. And she saw through him and told him to be gone. But as he was leaving, he turned to her and asked, how did you know that I wasn't Jesus? She said to him, because you have no wounds, Over and over again, in the resurrection stories, Jesus is recognized by his wounds. And I have a thought that perhaps it is when he first met the disciples, he had his hands buried deep within his robes. But when it came time, for the breaking of the bread, they saw his hands. There are a number of artists. This scene, this story is richly depicted in the history of art. I've shown some of the pictures during the reading of the gospel. I love the ones that show him breaking the bread with his wounded hands. Why is it that the risen Jesus bore the wounds? Shouldn't he have had a restored body? I like the explanations. Well, there's one explanation that goes, the wounds show what we did to him. And we're never to forget that. And I suppose there's some truth in that. The wounds show that all is not right with the world and what the world did to the love of God. But if that is true, I believe more deeply that the wounds also show what God has done for us. And whatever the world is doing, God is prepared to walk through it, to bear it all so that we may be gathered into life. And so this risen living love of God bears our wounds and takes all the wounds and 
the injustice of the world into God's own life, so that there they may be part of life. And we need not run away from our wounds or from our errors. God takes them and uses even our broken and empty hearts to reach us in the way of life. I don't know what kind of road you've been on this week. Perhaps it's been one of fun, bad guerrilla jokes, adventures, and seeing things that you have never seen before. Perhaps it's been one of grief, tragedy, and uncertainty. There are some roads that are very hard and very long. But there is one who bears the wounds of all those uncertain and broken roads and shares with us the bread of life so that we might have sustenance, meaning and purpose for our ongoing journey, so that we might know that our tragedies and our emptiness are not the end, but lifted into the story of life so that all our roads might bring us back to the triumph of love and we might recognize the risen one who is with us. Amen. Let us join together now as a family in prayer. By the way, if you have any special prayer requests that you would like to have included in our Sunday online worship services or any concerns that you would like us to bring in prayer, you're welcome to send an email to me or to Reverend Carey, and we will include them. I'll say a series of short petitions now, ending each with the phrase, Risen Lord, you hear our prayer, I invite you to respond, and in your risen life, you answer. Let us join our hearts together. O oh, gracious God, you are the one who is with us. On whatever road we're traveling, even if we are housebound and do not know any way forward, Lord, you are with us, feeding us, giving us a way. And in that truth, we know that you hear our prayers and answer. Risen Lord, you hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the people of Nova Scotia, beginning with those who have suffered loss and their families. We pray for the people of port pic and all the other quiet places where evil walked their road. We pray for the RCMP and police officers who show their humanity and in the midst of chaos ran to danger. We pray for women who are abused and we pray for those who are suffering mental illness who do not know the value of their lives and who do not know the value of the lives of others. Lord, we pray for compassion and we pray for healing. We pray for those who are dealing with COVID-19 and for our healthcare workers and our essential service workers and our government workers for all those who bear the scars of caring for the ill, exhaustion, separation from their families, grief, and risk. And we pray for those who are ill and those who love them. We pray for those who are grieving. We pray for the people of Africa and India and all those places in the world that do not have our resources, who are too used to plagues, 
to AIDS, to malaria, to war, human depravity. And now we're threatened by yet another. Help us, Lord, to truly see those who are around us for the sake of our own health and the health of our world. And we pray for those who were on the margins at the beginning of this crisis and are further on those margins and from our sight now. Help us to notice them in our midst. We pray for the hungry, the abandoned, and the afraid. Risen Lord, you hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for this, our family of Kingsway Lambton, for everyone who is listening to this broadcast, for those about whom they are concerned, and those with whom they have differences. We pray especially for those who are grieving at this time, and we lift up the Goodale family, Mary and Lynn and family as they mourn the death of Norm, beloved husband, father, and grandfather. We pray for the Visser family, for Fred, for Jennifer and Richard, for Mark, Joanne, and Joel, and Adam, and Victoria, as they mourn the death of June, beloved wife, mother, and grandmother. We pray for the Reagan Henry family as they mourn the death of Paula, beloved wife, mother, grandmother, and great grandmother. We pray for the Jardine family, for George and Chris and Louise and their families as they mourn the death of Margaret, the cherished wife, mother, and grandmother, and great grandmother. We pray for others who are grieving at this time. We pray again for Karen, scheduled for cancer surgery at the end of this month, and for Edith as she supports her daughter. We pray for other daughters dealing with depression, dealing with other issues. We pray for all our children. We pray for our friends at Humber Heights and New Horizons and the Grenadier and Tapestry and Dell Manor and other retirement and nursing homes. We pray for Bill and Kathleen as she supports him. We pray for others dealing with Parkinson's and heart disease and cancer, those who are supporting someone with dementia for those who bear other wounds on the road of their lives. Lord, help us to be with them. Help us to be with those who have other concerns this day about relationships, about distance from someone they love, about mental illness, about their work or their future. Lord, help us to be their supportive community and help them to recognize your commitment to them. Risen Lord, you hear our prayer. Listen now, Lord, as we bring you other concerns and other thanksgiving in the quiet of our own hearts. For all the silent prayers, risen Lord, you hear our prayers. You have answered us with a risen life that defies the lenses of our eyes and world, that shows us a way forward in the midst of all our heartbreak, and even in the midst of all our hopes. And in that truth, and in that light, and in that grace, we go forward on our way with great thanks and praise 
In Jesus' name, amen. It has been wonderful once again to share this third Sunday of Easter with you. I invite you to join us for our ongoing events during the week, again, Tuesday nights with Carrie and Wednesday morning Bible study. You're welcome to email us if you'd like to be added to our lists. Also welcome you to take some joy in what's being accomplished through those who are sewing masks. Apparently we don't need any more volunteers at the moment, which is a wonderful response. You are welcome to join in responding by calling a neighbor or a friend and letting them know that you are with them on the way. Thank you for being with us on this day. takes you this week. May you have the gift of being aware of the one who goes with you. You'll recognize him in those moments when you feel fed by the bread of life for your journey. And when you see the wounds of love going forward. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the presence of the Holy Spirit rests and remain with you all this day and forever. Amen.